once in a while. And um, where were you born? In Denver, North Dakota. And is that close to Fargo, or about fifty-six miles southwest? And what year was that? Nineteen twenty-five. Nineteen twenty-five. And you were what in the order of kids? Well, there were the four early yeah. children of dad, and then Kurt. So I was six. And name your brothers and sisters. Kyla, Charles, Jewett, Margaret, Kurt, myself, Don, Ray, Jerome, uh, Willie, Barbara, and Gail. I think I got them. Yep, I think. <laughs> now, uh, did, uh, what was your father's name? Joseph. And his first wife's name was? I'm sorry. But he had, and she died, is that? She died. And those were the first four that you named. Right. And then your mother's name was? Lillian Johnson. And uh, her folks came from Norway, or? Um, her grandparents, but um, Grandpa Johnson came from Norway. Okay, okay. And your, what was your father's parents' names? Do you remember? No. Um, we have a Hopperstead book. I don't know how many of you kids have one. Do you have one? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, they're all, all the names are listed in there. How long were you in Enderman? Um, I left when I was in the eighth grade. I started high school. What and did Grandpa Hopperstead do there? Grandpa was a Your contractor dad. and a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And I understand that he built much of the city of Enderlin. Um, Margaret has written a lovely tribute to him, and I gave that to Gary um, as part of the history. And uh, your mother Lillian was a housewife all this time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you? Didn't have time for anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so you went first through eighth grade at Enderlin? Yeah. And then where did you guys move? Um, outside of Hardin, Montana, close to St. Xavier, and I went to school in St. Xavier. Why the move? Because Dad had skin cancer. Okay. Part of his lip was eaten and um, several places because he was out in the sun all the time. And uh, Dr. Labbott, who was his doctor in Enderman, had moved to the Montana area and rented a lot of Indian lands. And he wrote Dad and said if he would come and manage the properties, he would treat his cancer. Wow. That was a <laughs> well paid, you know, that expensive stuff. And so what did you do there? You went to high school there? I went to high school in St. Xavier, which was a, on the Indian Reservation. But it was a new school for the white kids and the Indian kids had their own school. But some of them attended ours if they wanted to pursue certain things or... Yeah. Um, Give me an idea, how big was your school, like your class, do you have any idea? Oh, it was quite small. Um, some of the classes might be 15 or 20, but... That's nice. Uh, How'd you do? How were your grades? 
very good. I took a lot of subjects because I had extra time. And, um, oh, and Mr. Wills, the principal of the school, we had a good relationship because he was familiar with Enderman. Oh, <laughs> what a small world. Yeah, and he had uh, been sponsored by a doctor in Enderman. So, yeah, it was a small world. Okay. Later, when Gary uh, visited Australia on leave, I gave him Mr. Will's address there because he was teaching in Melbourne that season. So it really is a small room. So Gary got to meet Mr. Wills, who was the uh -huh. superintendent? Uh-huh. Yeah. Of our school. Yeah. Gosh. Uh. Yeah. So you graduated high school in what year? 42. 1942. Same year I got married. And how did you ever meet Dad in Enderlin, North Dakota? Well, I didn't. I met him. We had left Montana and gone to Denver because the war had started. Oh, yeah. And there were lots of jobs available to Dad. And he ended up uh, building uh, barracks and things for the ski troops in the mountains. I can't remember the name of the town, but it was Leadville. Oh, yeah, that's where I think Is most that, of them, way up in the mountains, because yeah. they were training for ski. Yeah, ski troops. Yeah. So you moved to Denver rather than the mountains, is that right? Yeah, we stayed in Denver and he went up there. He took um, a bus up and got to come home. Weekend. On weekend occasionally, not every wow. weekend. Wow. Uh, and so that you met Dad in Denver? Yes. He was um, at Lowry Air, Air Force. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where'd you meet? At a bar? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there was a photographer out at Lowry that lived. <laughs> across the alley from us with his wife, and uh, that's how we met. Whereabouts in Denver did you live? 1617 Franklin Street. 1617 Franklin, well, boy has it changed. Yep. It, uh, for a time, went through kind of a downward spiral, and now it's one of the in places in Denver, you know, that a little further east than that, it, yeah, because we used to see the Dowd, you know, Mamie Dowd Eisenhower. Uh -huh. We would see their electric car come down 17th Street. <laughs> really? Really. <laughs> <laughs> Never Gosh. saw her in yeah. person. <laughs> they had electric that. cars then. Uh, well, we're coming full cycle on that, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, so you met Dad, and uh, you got married where? At the Trinity Methodist Church in downtown Denver. Brash kids walking <laughs> in, asking Dr. Marble to marry us. And he said, yes, I will, as soon as... I round up two witnesses. We had nobody with us. Huh? Because everybody would have complained, especially Gorse's mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you got married, and so where did you live then? Well, um, of course. You had no money. He, he shipped out almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And I lived with the folks. And he was shipped to Wendover, Utah, which had nothing there. But he sent for me anyhow. 
thinking he would find some place. But I got there, took a bus, and the hotel was full, and there weren't any houses, you know, just... In Wendover? Yeah, at that time. And uh, so I went back to Salt Lake, got a hotel room for $14 a week. $14 a week? That was exorbitant. Which they let me have without any money. I got a job immediately because it was the Christmas season. Got a job. Where? where? At Grant's store. And, okay. and this was where? Downtown Salt Lake City. And I walked to work past the Mormon temple and everything. So it was a beautiful walk. And how long were you there? Just a few weeks and he was shipped to uh, Iowa. And his mother had come to visit and she took me under her wing and got us both tickets and we went to Iowa. Where about in Iowa? Sioux City, I think it was, because it was right across the border from Nebraska. Uh -huh. And uh, she went to visit her daughter in Nebraska, and I stayed in Sioux City and got a job in a restaurant. As a waitress? Or? And I was the worst ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was so afraid I would drop something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I never did it again. <laughs> uh -huh. How long were you there? Oh, just a few weeks, I think, and he was transferred to Carring, Nebraska. And I went there, and... Um, now that's close to Omaha? No, it's... Um, in western oh, okay. Nebraska, yeah. And we got a basement apartment. I can't remember what it cost. I think it was around thirty dollars a month. A month. What did he make as a uh, private? I don't remember. I remember my allotment when it caught up with me was eighty dollars a month. Well, that wasn't too bad at that time. Right. right. <coughs> but I didn't get it for five or six months. Red well, tape, you know. Well, when it finally came, you were rich. I don't think we got that pay. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> well, how'd you get to Scribner? Well, Gordon's sister was there. And her name was? Marguerite. <clears throat> I wasn't anywhere very long. So you went from Carney to Scribner? <clears throat> no, I think I went to Scribner after I had gone back to Denver. Mm -hmm. After that, where did you go? Well, I went home. You were born in October of that same year. Home meaning Denver? Yeah. I was with my folks and then Gordis's mother wanted me to come out to California. And she had the it was really a nursery. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she said she would take care of you while I worked. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what year that was? I was born in 43. It must have been um, 44 because the war ended in 45. Mm -hmm. Your dad came home in August of 45. So you stayed in California from 
until I knew he was coming home. Hmm. <clears throat> and then you moved back to Denver. Because he didn't want to be in California. Uh -huh. Okay, when he came home, where did you guys move to then? Was Well, he looked for work, couldn't find much, and they could use him at the fur farm. So that's when we moved to Genesee. Genesee or Bailey? Genesee at that point. Uh -huh. Uh, later, it must have been a couple of years later, because Gary was born and he was about six months old when Dad was offered the job up at Pine, Colorado, which was our mailing address. For but that was a long ways to the mailbox, wasn't it? Yes, we lived quite a way. Seven miles from the highway. Yeah, <laughs> tell us, tell me about your life at Pine. You you were seven miles from the highway. Well, of course, I never went any place unless we were able to go together because I didn't drive. Yeah. But that was on a on a fur farm. Mm hmm mm hmm And you had a house there. Yeah. Did it have indoor plumbing? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I can remember as a little kid um, cutting ice for the ice box, and uh, and of course they used it on the fur farm, and they would store that in an ice house with uh, sawdust and other things. So your typical day there would be kind of uh, stay in the house because it was so cold. You didn't actually work on the fur farm, did you? No. Yeah. No. I had two of you by then. Oh yeah, that kept you busy. Dances, did you ever start going to any dances at Pine? Oh yes. And I remember they would uh, mine tables up around the dance floor and put coats on and the kids would go to sleep on the tables. <laughs> uh, and those were at Bailey? Where were those dances? They were at a rural school, not in Bailey, but uh, I think they were close to the highway where we picked up our mail. Ah, so that was fun. Is that where you met Norman? No, Norman was uh, at Genesee. Okay, so you knew him before moving to Pine. Oh yeah. Did Norman ever play at any of those dances? No, yeah, because I remember him playing at some of the Grange dances. Oh, yeah. So. He always, with the Meyer Peters. Yeah. So how long, how long were you at Pine? We weren't there very long. And we tried California again, where he got a good job as a bus driver. Whereabouts in, in California? Oakland. Well, we lived in Walnut Creek, so we commuted. So you went from Pine to uh, Walnut Creek, California. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, how long were you in Walnut Creek? Well, let's see, you went to kindergarten there. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember how grown up you were when you got a bicycle and you would, <laughs> at five, you were very mature. Um, and didn't you start first grade in Mount Vernon? Mm-hmm. Yep. So we weren't there. Too long. Uh-uh. So, let's see, was Glenn born in California? Yeah, he was. So, you, uh, to continue, came from California back to Colorado, and you went where? Back to Genesee in the fur farm. And um, when did you get polio? I got polio um, the year Gary was born. 
He was born in June. 46. Uh-huh. In September. Uh -huh. The first part of September of 46. And you were at Genesee. That was the first yeah. time. Yeah. When was Glenn born? He was born in 1950. Is that right? Yeah. We were in California then, but this was uh, earlier. So you came back to Genesee with three little kids, is that right? Right. And uh, you moved into a house there? or? Yeah. We had a house, but there we had an outdoor toilet. You had indoor plumbing, but it wasn't hooked up to anything, is that right? We had water. But no plumbing for the bathrooms. Right. Uh-huh. Well, that was an adventure with three kids. <laughs> yeah, and you were well trained, though. <laughs> Except we had steps going down to the outdoor toilet. So in the winter, we had, what did we call the potty? <laughs> and because um, you couldn't step out in the, you know how the snow <laughs> would come in. <laughs> so it'd be pretty deep for going barefoot to the potty. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but we made it. Did you have a uh, telephone? No, not then. Uh -uh. Uh, television? No, we didn't get television until we went into the store. Yep. <laughs> Let's see, how, how long did you stay in that same house the whole time at Genesee? No, briefly we got to stay in the nicest house on the place, but when they hired a manager, we were relegated to this one. Yeah. But it, the facilities weren't hooked up in that one either. Uh, so you camped out for quite a, quite a period yeah. of time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at the fur farm, you say, what, uh, what went on at the fur farm? A lot of people don't know about fur farms. I know, and they aren't popular now with the environmentalists. <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, I think. I don't think they have any more because the environment... Mostly Russia. Yeah, they were letting the animals loose and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, but basically, what, what was raised on the fur farm? Well, your dad was in the fox unit. And the uh, hens were... like teared. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he was very young and athletic and he would trot <laughs> feeding them. And, uh, For a time, didn't he use a horse and wagon? They might have. I can remember driving uh, the wagon around and he'd throw that fox suit over the outdoor pens. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, after the fur farm, where did you go? Well... Can you stop that? Yeah. <clears throat> after the fur farm taken up, um, what did you do? Well... We bought the store. We had a Vogue. What store was that? The Pioneer Store on Highway 40, a gas station, and a few food supplies and then apartments. What do you mean you had a Vogue? You said you had a Vogue. Yes, we had a Vogue. I was against it because of having three little boys. And uh, your dad insisted on a vote. Well, all the little boys remembered was the big candy cane. 
<laughs> so you got outvoted four to one. Yes, I did. <laughs> what year was that that you bought the store? I don't remember. That must have been 51, 1951, because Glenn was a year and a half when we came. <laughs> <laughs> and the name of the store was the Pioneer Store, is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, at the Pioneer Store, did you have fun there? Was it, did it work out? I thought it was about some fun. Um, we didn't make much money, but we ate, <laughs> even though we ate old stuff a lot. <laughs> stuff that labels weren't on from kids tearing them off. <laughs> but uh, Dad made some extra money. Changing tires, he changed a lot of tires. Yeah. Because uh, the markup wasn't very much on anything. Because. To be competitive. Yeah. 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 So you s sold gas. Gas and oil, and he he sold a few tires, which was a good profit. Huh. But mostly he made most of his extra money. Changing tires. <laughs> While at the store, you had Thursdays off, as I remember it. And so Thursdays were spent. Well, usually your dad would go into town for supplies, and I stayed home and cleaned and got ready for another week. Yeah. But while at the store, if I remember, we horseback rode and... Yeah, because he could get away during the afternoon, <clears throat> or I could. Yeah. So we would uh, go for a ride and uh, if we weren't playing baseball or softball or... And did you participate in that? Well, I tried to go to the games. Yep. Three boys, three different teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, well, that was fun. The business wasn't too great. <laughs> it was slow during the day. Yeah, yeah. It's when people came home from work in Denver that they would stop and get milk or gas or something. Pick up their paper. Or... Cigarettes. <laughs> How much were cigarettes then? Uh, regulars were a dollar seventy-eight a carton, and uh, what did you call the long ones? Oh yeah, uh, they were a dollar ninety-nine a carton. A carton. That made them nineteen cents, twenty cents. For nineteen cents for the regulars. <laughs> My word! How much was gasoline? Um, I remember twenty-nine for a regular. And 31 for... High test, or ethyl, yeah. they used to call it. Yes. Uh, can you imagine that now? That's why people come by on such low wages. So did you rent the store? Or how did we that rented work? it, and we didn't have a lease. Yeah. Well, who owned it? Grandpa Ralston. Lucian Ralston. And he, he was so good to us, you know. He was. How long were you in the store? Um, 1951 through 1959. And then you did what? You bought? Well, um, Elsie Lee, granddad's daughter, wanted the store and it was a good time to let her have it because we were being bypassed by the interstate. And then I got a call from the club wanting me to be the bookkeeper and secretary. When you said the club, what was the club? Mount Vernon Country Club. So they offered you a job to be the secretary? Yeah. Wow. And Dad went to work? Uh, 
he went to work for Meyer Hardware mm -hmm. in Golden. Well, after the store, <clears throat> where did you move? After the store. Oh, we had bought a ranch. And we moved uh, over there. And Dad finally got a, well, he worked at several different places, and I worked to make the payments on the ranch. <laughs> And uh, give us an idea. How big was the ranch? Do you remember? <clears throat> yeah, it was um, 252 acres. And what did you pay for it? Oh, I can't remember. Was it 32,000? That sounds about right. <clears throat> but I really don't remember. But we where, got it cheap. <laughs> where was it? It was on, um, I called it Sweet Gulch, but it, they called the one next to it Sweet Gulch. Um, but basically it was the evergreen area? Well, it was, Not really. Uh, it was close to the intersection too, evergreen. It was, you know, where the old rancho was. What else was there at that intersection? The teepees. Yeah, and the roll-offs lived behind the teepees. <clears throat> that area is sure grown. The teepees aren't there anymore. I know. Uh, uh, the old rancho still is. Oh yeah, yeah, it still is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you were there for a number of years. Let's see. You started selling portions of it? Yeah, well first we um, gave you kids each 10 acres. And then um, we sold off some of the property. And I think we had 160 left that we sold in one piece. And then you sold that and you quit your job? Or? I quit my job in 1964, I think. And because uh, we were selling property and I got pregnant. <laughs> and uh, along came who? Tina Dion. And what year was that? 1965. And Dad was working where? He was working at Coors Brewery. So after you sold the ranch, you moved to? Baker City. Weren't you in Riverton for a while? Oh, we were in Riverton when he was working for course. Yeah. And then uh, after you sold the place, you moved here to Baker City. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Uh, 1971, I think. 1971. Uh, so you've been here since 1971. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Longer than in Colorado or anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So when you first came to Baker City, where did you move to? We moved out on Pine Creek. Did you buy just a house out there or was it? No, we bought 245 acres and then we bought um, a small acreage that gave us um, another entrance into our property. I can't remember how many, 10 or so. Well, a nice place, huh? Yeah. And what did you do out there? Oh, we had some cattle and some horses. And mm -hmm. 
So Gina went to school um, at Haynes, or? No, she started school in Baker and finished in Baker. Mm -hmm. What was life like up there? Did it snow? Were you in the snow belt? Yes, definitely we're in the snow belt. <laughs> the first year was particularly bad. And uh, when a place came available halfway down the road where it didn't snow so much, we snapped it up. And that was on a small acreage then? Yes, just eight. And, uh, I liked it because it had two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> With indoor plumbing? Yes. <laughs> well, then did you sell your other place or a portion we, of it? We yeah. sold, uh, I think, several parcels because at that time they couldn't subdivide. Mm -hmm. huh. And then um, the last part we sold all in one piece, I think. To the baseball player? To Joe? We sold Joe Rudy uh, several parcels. Mm. Let's see, and then uh, uh, you were at the, the lower place for a time. Is that where uh, Dad died? Or is that the yeah, Yes. Mm -hmm. And I tried staying there alone for two years, I think. And then I rented the place temporarily in Baker. But I needed more to do at that point, so I bought a place. Tell me, when did you learn to drive? You didn't drive in Colorado. I know. I was 55. Uh, and I thought, what would I do if something happened to Dad? And so he bought a little Audi for me that I would be comfortable in. And I was, and that thing took me, I w went to work for the schools then temporarily and uh, never missed a day because of weather. Uh -huh. That's when I learned to drive and I got some Well, who taught you how to drive? Did you just get in and start driving? No, but I had driven a little, you know, and I drove that old Jeep, and yep. But I was just kind of afraid of the traffic and mm -hmm. everything. But I got comfortable with it. And, but I never did like to drive really. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go just, very far. It was kind of a matter of necessity, wasn't it? Well. Not really, but I found it was very convenient to. <laughs> To give you some independence. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, uh, so with that thought, we're going to talk a little bit about a day or two or more in the life of a young girl growing up in North Dakota. Uh, you got up in the morning and you did what? Well, I was on the second floor, had a bedroom, and the bathroom was there, so I started in the bathroom to get ready for school, got dressed, and cleaned up and brushed my teeth, and went downstairs and had breakfast. Always had a pot of oatmeal on the wood stove, <laughs> and I always there was something about a warm bowl of oatmeal in the morning that was, especially in the winter, that was so satisfying. 
How cold would it get? Well... Did you have a thermometer? Oh yeah, the typical high was up 40 below. Ah. And we didn't notice it that much, but I would wear snow pants over because we always wore dresses and I had to wear those ugly black stockings and I had to fold them over in the back. I can't remember how I kept them straight. But it was darn cold and I only had two blocks, two and a half, to walk to school, but you knew <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> But we, um, we love this snow. I remember the boys making snow caves on the side of a hill. And they would last all winter. Jeez. And the snow banks on the, next to the house. And uh, they always banked the house with snow and it helped keep the heat in. Yeah. And, uh, we had a cold furnace. And okay, you'd bank the hat where the houses would get banked with snow to keep them mm -hmm. warm. When you came home from school, what did you do for entertainment? Well, um, I always liked to read. We had a little public library, but uh, it cost 10 cents for a card. Whoa. And I didn't have a card, and they issued me a card anyhow, because they knew how I loved to read, but I always got the books back on time. Um, mostly I remember reading when the weather was bad, and then when we had an ice rink, which was about a mile away, we would go ice skating at night, and it would be so cool. <laughs> I would put on every pair of socks I could find and wore somebody's skates, not mine. <laughs> but they were big and they handled a lot of socks. But I remember taking the skates off up at the ice rink, and it was so cool. But it was fun when you were skating. Let's see, we played a, a lot of uh, simple card games. Oh, we played ping pong on the dining room table. We had a ball, but we didn't have any paddles. And we had one of those ashtrays that you could hold it hand to hand. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> a small frying pan, which we used as paddles. So you had clink, clunk, clunk. <laughs> I remember my dad yelling downstairs. They were in bed already. We used stuff. Clink, clunk, clunk. In the summer. Um, you, you lived in town, so did you have electricity? Oh, yeah. We had a lovely house, which Dad had accumulated during good times. Yeah. Um, I think it had four bedrooms upstairs and the bath, only one bath. And, uh, but it was a huge bathroom. And downstairs we had an old-fashioned kitchen. We had a what we called the sewing room where mother had her machine and where we did the ironing. We had a summer kitchen. Uh, How'd you do laundry? She had a, what did you call it? Not a tub, but a boiler that she put on the stove early in the morning. To, to heat, heat the water. To heat the water. And also there was a, I don't know what you called it, 
a hot water thing that would a boiler yeah always um, be hot from the stove from the witch stove and um, she had a wash tub and she had uh, I remember when she got a Maytag machine. Whoa. But she still, but she managed to. Eight people put out a lot of laundry. Yes. Well, we wore clothes to school probably the five days and hung mm -hmm. them up mm -hmm. when we got home and had you know. Your work clothes and your school clothes. Yeah. Or your play clothes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was... Do you have a radio? Yes. And we gathered around the radio, like you said, for Fibber McGee and Molly and the Jack Benny show and I can't remember who else then, but uh, yes, uh, we enjoyed it as much as anything. That was uh, basically f through the eighth grade and then you moved, of course. And uh, uh, tell we me... We lost everything. Why did you lose everything? Because uh, we owed taxes on the house for three or four years. Uh, I remember the piano going for a grocery bill. So they had a sheriff's sale or a sale of all your stuff. Mm. Yep. And I, Kurt, Dad went ahead to Montana. Was this depression? Yeah, it was uh, 39. It was yeah. And I remember uh, Kurt came back. He he went with Dad, and he drove a pickup back of Doctor Lamb. And Mother sat in the front with Willie was the baby then, and probably Jerome and the rest of us were in the back of that pickup with all our belongings. Wow. Bedding and but my mother was so optimistic. She was sewing and embroidering pillowcases for her new home, you know, and she had pots and pans and dishes and um, tried to <laughs> and for food on the way. My grandma had made donuts. They're filling. <laughs> That was a pretty long trip, uh, yeah. actually. We stayed at a motel one night. It had a bed and a cot and... The floor. And the floor. But it was just an adventure. The only time I got depressed was when I saw this little cabin our paper hanging down. Um, it was two huge rooms. Um, this was your new home in Montana? That was our new home. And um, Dad couldn't work on the house at first because he was building bins for the sharecroppers stuff they brought. It was, it was depressing. My bed was a cot in the kitchen because I was the only girl. Uh, and all the boys bumped in the... Yeah, uh, I think there were four boys and um, they had a curtain up between, because the rooms were huge, you know, kind of like that. Uh -huh. But uh, my dad built a table and benches, and Dr. Babbitt must have had some beds he provided. Uh -huh. 
So what did you guys do for entertainment there? Well, surprisingly, my dad taught me poker. I insisted because he would play with the boys. Uh -huh. And um, I still would bring books home from the library and school. And there was always homework, homework by lamplight. So you didn't have electricity? We didn't in at first. We did not have electricity. The bathroom was an outhouse, of course, and it had just a piece of canvas for a door. But that got chilly. <laughs> not very private. <laughs> well, yeah, there wasn't anyone around yeah. that faced the river. <laughs> Um, but eventually, Dad built on a kitchen and living room, and electricity came, but we didn't have a telephone or anything. What did you do for water? Did you have a pump? Well, that was sad. Um, we had irrigation water only, which they boiled the first summer. I was so sick all summer. And it must have been from the water. And um, we would boil it. It was fine for coffee. But I remember just trying to drink some water, and it was like sand sifting through. Oh, no. <laughs> it was. Uh, Bad times. Well, in retrospect, was it? Well, I never really minded it because I belonged to a 4 H club and I was cheerleader, and, uh, but always depended on somebody else for transportation. And we had dances at the school, and that was fun. And, uh, so it wasn't a poor me. You still stayed active, and the oh, boys stayed active. Oh, yeah. And we would do things like, uh, for entertainment, we would uh, do that, throw the ball at the milk, Cartons. They have only we would uh, stack up rocks and throw rocks. <laughs> I mean, we always could come up with something. I wondered how come you had such a good arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we kept busy all the time. Did you know you were poor? Never, because there were so many in the same boat. Yeah. I never felt poor. I remember my, for Christmas, my grandma always gave us a tablet and pencil. And that was a big thing, to get a new tablet and a new Yeah, and I, I bet mean, it was an Indian chief on the front. Yes, it was. It was Indian. Uh, and my mother always had a tree, no matter where we were. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Before we moved to uh, Montana, uh, we went to the Lutheran Church, and they always gave us a sack of that awful Christmas candy. <laughs> and that it had an orange in it. Yeah. <laughs> now that was a big deal. That was a big deal, yeah. No, I never felt poor. Never again. We were pretty poor, <laughs> you know. We <laughs> were pretty poor. But people. You know, even in the club, they were so nice to us. Well, and your your dad was working, and so many oh, yeah. weren't working. He wouldn't um, join the WPA because it was government. Government, and um, he would make um, wooden chests, like cedar chests and sell, and I remember my mother would embroidery on uh, pillowcases wow. to 
and it didn't take a lot to get something to eat. You know, yeah. that's why their taxes weren't paid and other things. Yeah. But, and you didn't have the money, and the depression hit, and people were throwing themselves out of second-story windows and fourth-story, and, yeah. and the economy came crashing down. But that that was part of America at that time. You just persevered. Yep. But um, Margaret, my half sister, knew another side of Dad. A better side, I mean, economically. He bought a farm he, that he rented out, and he had, you know, lots of money yep. and built this beautiful house at the time. That you lived in until eighth grade, basically. Yeah. yeah. And one thing, getting back to that house that I dearly love, it had a closed in front porch, huge, clear across, and it was divided in half, and one uh, had the furniture, typical uh, porch furniture, and uh, the other side and it had glass windows in the door. Uh, they had a bed so that anybody that was uncomfortable because the upstairs got pretty hot. Could come down and sleep and they had windows all around there. Uh -huh. It was it was nice. It sounds like it. Mm -hmm. See, when Gary Glenn and you and I took the trip up and mm -hmm. we saw your old friend um Bugsy? No? Uh in Saint Xavier. Oh, what was his name? Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> Did we see your house? No, that was in Montana. That's I it. don't think we... No, the, the nice house in Enderlin. Yes, I think we went by there, only they had removed the front porch of the main apartment house. That's right. Out of it. Yeah. yeah. That's and right. it looked a lot smaller than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Things always seem bigger when you're smaller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so after um, your dad built on the kitchen, how long were you guys there after that? Not very long, was it? No, actually, altogether, we were only there three years. Yeah. Uh, but it seemed like an eternity until yeah. we got those. <laughs> uh -huh. But, you know, like you said, even though you were poor, you didn't really know it, and you still... Did you... You all played kind of together, brothers and sister? Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of neat. 